We're going to take a look at the price discrimination result with the aid of some mathematics now. Mathematically, the firm is assumed, therefore, to have profits made up of revenue from the first market. Let's call that R1, which depends on the quantity sold in that first market, plus the revenue from the second market, R2, which depends on the quantity sold in that market. So Q1 and Q2 represent these two quantities. Minus the total cost, which is the cost of the total output, Q1 plus Q2. So let's have a look at the conditions that the firm will apply for maximizing profits here. In order to maximize profits, pi, the firm will have to ensure that the following pair of conditions is satisfied. First of all, d pi dq1 has to be equal to zero. What is d pi dq1? Well, it's the derivative of the revenue one term first, r1 prime of q1. There's no q1 involved in the second term, so that disappears, minus the derivative of c with respect to q1. So the marginal revenue from, mar from market one must be equal to the marginal cost in market one, which will have to be equal to zero. At the same time, d pi dq2 will have to be equal to zero. So differentiating the profit function with respect to R2, we get nothing from the first term. The derivative of R2 with respect to Q2 minus, now we differentiate the cost function, C prime, just as before, has to be equal to zero. So these are the two conditions that have to apply. Now, clearly, if we interpret the first term MR1, that's R prime 1, that has to be equal to the marginal cost, which is the second term here, C prime, and MR2, that's the R2 prime, has also to be equal to marginal cost. So putting them together, MR1 must be equal to MR2. Now we want to make use of another result, which is that the marginal revenue can be expressed in terms of the price and the elasticity in a market. If we start with any market just for the moment then, revenue is price times quantity. Marginal revenue, which is R prime, will be the derivative of this total revenue, which will be the first term times the derivative of the second term, dq dq is just one, plus the second term, q, times the derivative of the first term with respect to q, which is dp dq. Now, this second term is very much like the elasticity expression. It's it's almost the same as the elasticity expression, or it's reciprocal. If I write P into, the first term obviously is just one. If I now write Q over P times dP dQ, we can see that this expression is just as we had before. That P will uh, cancel out with the P outside the bracket. And so I have P into 1 plus, and this expression here is the reciprocal of the elasticity. The elasticity of demand is dQ dP times P over Q, so this is just 1 over E, the elasticity of demand. So this is the result we're going to make use of. So the marginal revenue in market 1, then, is P1 times 1 over 1 plus E1, the elasticity in that market, and that has to be equal to the marginal revenue in market 2. So that is P2 divided, uh, multiplied by 1 plus 1 over E2. So this condition has to hold, and obviously we can rewrite it 
to have the prices on one side of the equation and the expressions involving the elasticities on the other side of the equation. Divide both sides by P2 and at the same time devote, divide both sides by the expression in the brackets on the left hand side and we get P1 divided by P2 is equal to 1 plus 1 over E2 all divided by 1 plus 1 over E1. The ratio of the prices is equal to this expression relating to the two elasticities. And we can see, therefore, that if the elasticity of demand is high in market 2, where the elasticity is E2, this expression here will be greater than this expression here, which means the price in market 1 will be set higher than the price in market 2. The only situation in which it would be optimal for the prices to be the same would be if these two elasticities of demand were equal to each other.